Right, so for coding the servo, I am going to use pin number 13, just because you see, um, a lot of these breakout boards, they don't even have a pin zero, one or two um, available to you. They're doing motors, they're doing something else. They're not available. And the problem with the stock microbit makeco.org servo blocks are, guess what pins they have? Just one, two and zero, one, two. So look, the boards I don't uh, that I have often uh, much prefer uh, pin 13 or 15 or one of the higher up ones. All right, so I'm gonna use those ones. Uh, here's how I do it. I'm gonna have uh, maybe a button here. When I press the A button, um, when I press the B button, and just just to remind you what servos do. So servos are like compasses. You know, they they point north, south, east, or west, or like a clock that points to twelve and six. Whereas motors are like car wheels. They just spin around DC motors. These are servos we're talking about. They make nice little like uh, robot noises. You'll find this stuff under advanced pins, and it, you're looking for a servo right to pin. So when we go in the middle, I want our servo, and I'm, we're gonna use pin 13. So 180 is over that side, that's over the other way, and 90 is in the middle. So we're gonna need to set this to 90. Cool. Then um, we're gonna go duplicate, and when I press A, I want it to set it to that way, and when I go B, I want it to set it that way. To 180. So let's test this now. And um, press play. So if I press A, it goes one way, B, it goes the other way, and A and B together in the middle. Grand. Fine, except I have no sort of, <laughs> no way of telling what's going on if my server's not working. So I'm going to put in a little block here that says this should be roughly, you know, that way. And, uh, I'll put another block here that says it should be pointing this way. I'll just draw like, like a little arrow or something. And an arrow the other way. Now we might find that those arrows aren't super accurate. But look, that's going to happen, especially because you see this lever here that's moving around. That's put on with a screw. So whatever's going on in that blue thing underneath the gears, someone could have just, it could have already been locked to 70 degrees when someone attached the the, the arm of it. So it could be totally off, but it's fine. So let's just um, let's just test this. Uh, press A and B together. It should go back into the middle. If I go that way, it goes that way. If I go that way, it goes the other way and A back into the middle. Grand. That is totally fine, you, you know, uh, to go with. So, um, just really quickly, if you did want to add in a variable, um, what you could do here is if you make an angle, let's say if you wanted it at a certain angle, you could say instead of just writing hard to 90, you could say when I push this button, subtract 10 from the angle. When I push this button, add 10 to the angle and then just set it to the angle. You see the way you can go set angle to something. So that's how you do it. But I'm just gonna keep it simple here because it works, I think. So I'm gonna hit download and connect it up. Cool, so it goes flashy, flashy, flashy yellow. And um, when it's all done, I'm gonna press go. Just if you're, if you're using this IoT hat, just watch out that there's a, you know, you need to actually, I think, power into this particular one, to the side one. I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll see, I'll see if it works. The other thing with this IoT hat, while it's great, it sends data to the internet and graph stuff, it takes a little while to boot because you know, it tries to play around with the Wi-Fi and that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, if I push the two of them together, A and B together, it should have up. There we go. And that is that is actually working just fine. It's pointing up. If I point it this way, <laughs> is this button working? There we go. That way, ah, look, so the survey's, the survey servo is totally backwards. It's gone the wrong way, but it's fine, you know. Um, I mean, what if I turn it upside down? Would it make sense then? Yeah, it makes sense then if I put like a down arrow, I guess, and the two of them together. Grand, super. So in this case, I didn't have to plug into the side, um, so it seemed to work okay. But uh, 
yeah, just watch out. Servos need a lot of, of ba battery power. And anytime my server doesn't work, it's because I'm using batteries that are even like half charged or three quarters charged. The servo, it might be just below the threshold then, do you know? Okay, so we're going to start with this little servo that, you know, it's going to try and open a window or whatever. Um, so uh, with this tentacle breakout board, I'm going to look for pin 13 down there at the bottom and the colors match up. Every servo has kind of a plus and a minus, as in like, just like a battery, like the bump and the flat bit. Um, so and you see, they, they tend to be red and black wires like in this battery pack. And you can see this has got the same thing, right? It's instead of, it's got red for plus. It's not got black, it's got a brown, but you know, close enough. So the last one, what about the orange one? The orange one or yellowy one is for this signal. Okay, so that's the data. So the bottom two, and you can see they match up here. Um, so ground, plus, and it actually slots straight on like that. Isn't that nice? Okay, so into pin 13 there, and I'm ready to go, because I've, here's a micro bit here that I've made earlier. And for this, uh, I'm just gonna plug it into some USB power. USB is five volts, but it is brought down quite a lot by the micro bit. So I don't know if it's got enough juice, but maybe it does. Let's give it a go. There we go, window open, window, oops, <laughs> window, oops, window, let's push two of them together and see if they can kind of, here we go, window close. All right, grand. So that's that one. Uh, let's look at uh, another one. This guy here is an IOT board, which is super cool because um, what it does is it can write straight to ThingSpeak or if that, then this, then that, if this, then that. and. Uh, so you could have a website with a graph and it could show your servo in its position really, really easily. Okay, so it connects your Wi-Fi here and graphs away, which you normally need to, a PC to do. So I'm going to look for pin 13 here, which is, watch out, it's not exactly at the edge, it's right there. Great, so same again, I'm just going to put in my micro bit here and I just make sure it turns it on. Just watch out for, for this particular one. The Wi-Fi takes a little while to turn on. Oh, do you know, it would be good if I actually plugged it in, wouldn't it? So you have two options here on this guy. You can plug in the top, which you'll need to transfer data. This is kind of a power only. So if you have like um, some kind of power mobile phone charger or something like that, you can plug it in there, you know. Um, some of the some of the things, they do need that. Um, seems to be the preferred way to, to power this thing on. Um, I'm going to try it with this one the top just could be handier for for because I, I can I can put my code on it so let's uh, give it a go so that's up yeah I think this is gonna work lovely and up again great I'll just see does it work the same or any better on the side power thingy my bobby huh it's the other way you know that was mean these two things I guess you have to flip it to design, guys. Um, let's turn this on. Am I getting anything? Do you know what's going on? Uh, I forgot to turn on. <laughs> there we go. Uh, now. Grand. You know, I feel this is slightly better. I can't put my finger on why, but maybe it's not. It doesn't really matter difference okay so that's that let's do another board this one here is the motor bit now this guy is primarily for driving driving motors um so it's got these it's got this big power pack and it's got uh, a pair of outputs for motors which is pretty cool because you know I mean that's more for like these things you know for driving those um, and you can see the input here is up to nine volts, six to nine volts, which is way more substantial. Um, it's also got this nice little buzzer and a bunch of other things. What I really like about this board, especially is it, it, it's got a five and three volts. So some sensors are five volts and some are three and you're kind of stuck normally, but you can actually switch 
these pins between the two. Now, I want the full wax, so I'm going to set these to 5 volts. I'm going to plug uh, my servos in here into pin 13. They almost match up, it's just the yellow is blue. Just slightly different, but you know, it's just, it's not that different. So I'm going to put that in there. Go in there. That looks alright. And I now need to turn it on. Wait, I need the marker bit. There we go. Um, things that people do. Well, I'll just I'll just show it working for a second. So yeah, so it's I've turned the switch here on the bottom. There's the on switch. And now if I push the buttons, it's all fine. Push the left, right, back to the middle. Oh, it's gonna stuck there. <laughs> nice, grand. So um. If you can hear that kind of that server is absolutely murdering these batteries at the moment. Um, so it's hunting for its neutral position, but it's kind of shaky, you know, it's, it's going to keep working. So I would definitely recommend whatever you're not using your server, just completely turn it off. To be honest, just plug it out. It definitely works now, doesn't it? Yes, I can hear, I can hear it making all the noises. It's kind of, def ah, do you know what I've done? I flip and plugged it in upside down. Whoops. Well, there you go. It didn't burst into flames, although it probably wasn't great for for everything. So, uh, pop it back into pin 13. There we go. Now it's happy again. Let's go nuts. Happy servo. So just to make sure I wasn't totally crazy, I just want to see if I power this off, take out a battery, and I just want to see, does this work purely on... Because the other one's kind of worked on USB only, you know? See, it's on there, look. Okay. I don't hear any servo grumblings. So it really is. And even turn it on. Nothing. Because it's, 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 the batteries are slightly run down. And even if your battery gets down to like 75% and you're only on a, like, maybe two or three batteries, that could be it. Like, you could be wondering why your thing is not working. You just don't have enough power. Whereas if I plug this in, there we go. Now it's, it's happy again. So I always, when I'm using this particular board, whenever I get my project onto my micro bit, I take it off to make sure it's not this kind of like umbilical cord fooling me into thinking that it's, I'm on battery power. Make sure you're on battery power by disconnecting the PC. Cool. So they are the three boards. Uh, so you can do it on a crocodile clips um, with just, you know, with a separate power source, but 1.5 volts and 1.5 volts is three together. And these things are supposed to be between 4.5 to 6 volts. Um, oh, actually, while I have this in my hand, there is a slight difference between these two. Look at these guys. All right, This is an SG90, which, you know, points kind of like that way. You also get stuck or that way. And but if it, you know, if this thing is, is uh, not behaving and pointing the wrong way, just pull the thing off, plug it into your, your, your program here, set it in the middle, you know, oh, actually, I can see the one, isn't it? Um, hang on, let me put this one in here. I'm going to show you how to just calibrate a servo into the right position. Put this back in here. There. Now I can hear it grumbling there. Okay. So the wheel is turning. You can't see the arm moving because there's no arm on it. I put it into the middle. So now I know that that's 90 and now I put the arm back on it. And now it should be a lot more like, oh, it's not exactly straight, is it? Yeah, like there. Well, kind of, look, you get the idea, <laughs> right? And now it goes in the right kind of way because chances are when you pick up a servo, someone could have just put it there, you know, in the wrong way. Uh, so you kind of have to kind of reset your servo by taking the arm off and then, there's a screw, you know, you can just get a little um, a screwy thing and, and, and screw it back in once it's in the right position, which is what you should do. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, this continuous servo. Look at this guy, right? That's totally different. This goes 180 degrees. Oh, it's stuck, which means it's powered on. Remember, if your servo is stuck, it means it's connected to something. Or, well, when I say it's stuck, obviously it, this guy can't go past. So it goes from there, stuck all the way to here stuck it doesn't it doesn't go in a full circle right that's because it ain't a continuous servo right it doesn't 
it doesn't do that. So this guy is though. This guy can do a uh, a full like wheelie wheelie wheelie. It goes round and round and round. So let's give this guy a go. Put this in here. All right, uh, and now. Wee! Look at him go! What a happy little servo. Let's stop in the middle. Try to go the way. Whoa! Look at that go. Okay, so this is a continuous servo. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about this another time um, in more detail, but <laughs> for now, don't use this. Use this. Okay, this is a, a regular. SG90, not uh, FS90 or uh, which is looks very similar, but is a totally different thing. And also big beefy servos uh, are going to need like more power. Uh, so just watch out for that. Like if you have a big server, um, you can also get servo connectors. See these guys. If your servo is too short, you can just that will snap into the end of your servo to make it uh, to make it bigger. But that is pretty much it. Um, cool things you can do with servos. Uh, I, I'll just show you, which is not supposed to be in this video, but I'll just show you this over here. Whoop, 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 whoop. This guy here, now I'm using Raspberry Pi for it, but this is like a little like, uh, laser turret. So you can see I've got servos here. See the little servos here? And it's on a robot arm. And then this guy moves up and down. So this is a little laser pointer, and what it does is the camera. It's also down there. Um, the camera sees a person. I turn this off to make a noise. It sees a person and then it aims that on their face. It just annoys them with a laser. But actually, I'm, I'm actually just trying to, to track things. Uh, just like mess around with things. But that's kind of where you could end up with servos. Um, and you can see this is a Raspberry Pi servo hat. Oh yeah, this one here on this robot arm. You can see that these are the little um, SG90s at the side, right? But see this guy down here. It's an MG something. What cool noise. Same connector for this big guy. Needs more power. You can't just power this guy off with a tiny like one or two batteries. Like that you might get away with that with an SG90, but no way with this guy. You, you need, I don't know what the rating for this is. Maybe it needs like six volts or something like that. Um, but you definitely need a substantial amount of, of like power, like, you know proper a proper load of power for those things and this is like a little robot arm and a grabber and that kind of thing cool so that's it that's right for servers i think yeah